find that one person in your relationship is always initiating sex. I see it all the time in my coaching. One partner, often the man in heterosexual couples, finds himself initiating sex way more than his partner. It is totally possible, my friends, to balance the scales, and I am gonna tell you how in this video. Be sure to watch to the end because I'm gonna share with you exactly how to even the playing field and get all of the players in the game. And by game, I mean bed. But before I share my step-by-step -step roadmap, there's a quick but super important fact that you've got to know first. See, the research tells us that men, in fact, tend to initiate more across the board. But it also tells us that while men wish that they didn't have to initiate as much, women also wish that they wanted to initiate more. And this is super important because it means that in most cases, your partner actually wants the same thing that you do. It's just up to the two of you to figure out how to awaken that desire desire and turn it into action. And now that we've covered that, let's dive right into how you're going to make it happen in your bedroom. Step one, gather your data. That's right. It is time to put on your lab coats and reflect on some cold, hard facts. I almost said science hats. It's time to put on your science hat, but scientists wear Lab, is that even true? I was a professional scientist once. I have never owned a lab coat. I even had 24 hour access to a chlamydia lab and I still never once wore a lab coat. The true first step to fixing a relationship issue is to address it with your partner. But before you do that, it's important to get a very clear sense of the situation for yourself. Look at the past three to six months. Ask yourself how much the balance is really off and also why. Are you actually the one who is initiating all the sex or does your partner maybe just have subtler ways of doing it? And if it's you who's always doing the initiating, are there patterns to when or how you initiate? Is it always in the morning, always in the night? Do you take her menstrual cycle into consideration? Is it only on weekends? Is it when you know that she is gonna be free or when she wants to spend time with the kids? Take an honest look at the lay of the land and keep in mind all of the information that you've gathered when you approach your partner with the issue. And remember, right now, you're just gathering data. You're not interpreting it. That's not your job just yet, okay? So don't tell yourself stories. This is just objective facts. Don't attach any deeper meaning. Don't make it mean that she's like this or you're like this or our relationship is if you do that, you're gonna start spiraling, okay? If your partner isn't initiating sex, or even if they're rejecting sex, it doesn't mean that they don't love you. It doesn't mean that they're not attracted to you. It just means that they're not initiating sex. Don't jump to conclusions. Give the other person the benefit of the doubt. You are so much more likely to succeed in love and marriage that way. Step two, approach with curiosity. Now that you have the information, the key is to approach with curiosity and not to blame. If you wanna make changes, there's only one way to do it, and that is by working as a team. Making any meaningful change in a relationship is like rolling a big boulder across a road. It's totally possible, but it's gonna take you both, and you're gonna to have to be pushing in the same direction. If you're standing on opposite sides and the thing isn't budging, well, maybe that's because you're not teaming up and doing it from the same side. It's gonna take a lot of nudging and pushing and rolling in order to get this thing to move. I don't know why you're moving a boulder across the road. Maybe it's stopping you from getting to the Grand Canyon or something like that. In this case, the Grand Canyon being like epic sex and orgasms. Yeah, if you wanna get to the Grand Canyon, consider subscribing to this channel. Approach your partner with curiosity. Talk to them about how they feel in the current dynamic. Like really get in there and get information on their feelings. What is it about the initiation situation that they like, that they don't like? What do they think could be better? Then get into the specifics. Talk about your feelings. Use I statements like I feel this way, I think this, and avoid placing blame. Tell each other what you like and what you don't like. Ask each other what turns you on, what you would need in order to initiate more or just to say yes more maybe. Work together to come up with what both of your ideal situation would be and know that you may need to, probably will need to compromise a little bit here and there. And that brings me to step three, learn each other's language. Now that we've talked about what the current situation is, as well as what your ideal future looks like, let's move on to some crucial differences between, again, male and female sexuality that's gonna help you to land this plane. When it comes to initiating sex, sometimes it feels like 
the genders speak completely different languages. Men tend to be a lot more overt about their initiation, while women tend to be a lot more subtle. On top of that, many women initiate sex by getting their partners to initiate. It's kind of funny, right? For a man, initiating sex could look like touching his partners under the cover, pushing his boner into her from behind. Please stop doing that, I hate when you do that. Go in for a deep sensual kiss, right? These are sort of like obvious initiation tactics. A woman, on the other hand, she might put extra effort into her appearance that day in order to get her partner's attention. She might wear something a little sexy. She might look at him for a little longer than usual at the dinner table. She might run her hand across his arm. These things might actually not look like initiating sex to you, but that is the way that many women do it. So she might think she's initiating all the time. You have to talk to each other about how you initiate and learn to look out for each other's signals. You might find the scales balancing a lot sooner. Also, there's really clever ways to let your partner know that you're open to having sex. You could put out a specific blanket. You could turn on a specific light. All you have to do is come up with a sign that says, hey, I'm open to sexy time and then agree on it and then use it. Pretty easy. Step four is identify the blocks. Let's face it, we live in a world that teaches men that they gotta beat the aggressors and it teaches women that they should just wait, sit back, look pretty, and hope to be approached. On top of that, there are a million things in our society that are pretty much designed just to make women feel ashamed of their sexualities, insecure about their bodies, and struggle with confidence. And it's a damn shame because I know for a fact that there is a vibrant, horny, sex goddess hiding inside of every single woman. She just needs to get over the social, emotional, and sometimes relationship roadblocks that are in her way. Back to the boulders in the road. The first step to overcoming those blocks is to identify them. So have an honest conversation about what in her life is getting her down, what is stopping her from being interested in initiating sex. I've said this a thousand times on this channel, it is often about getting the blockages in the way more than it is about adding fuel to the fire. Look, it could be something as simple as the fact that the house is always messy and it distracts her. It could be something that's stressful at work, a bigger life issue like a sick parent or child. It might be that she's afraid of rejection. You know, women are afraid of rejection too. I mean, whatever it is, once you can identify it, you can work together to either get rid of it or at least find ways to work around it. Which brings me to step five. Set some strategies. Now that you've got a clear and thorough lay of the land, getting to action is gonna feel so much easier. The next step is figuring out how you can create an environment where you both feel comfortable initiating and being initiated. And this could mean a whole bunch of things. Start by putting an effort to make yourself desirable to your partner. I mean, remember early on in your relationship when you put a lot of effort in before a date? Bring some of that energy back. Trim that beard, trim those pubes, spray on a little cologne maybe in the evening on a work day just because. Go out of your way to do nice non-sexual things for her, things that make her feel seen and appreciated, maybe picking her up some flowers or something. You might just be surprised at how much these simple things turn her on and make her want you because they make her think about you in the courtship and the dating phase. Also, let her know in subtle ways that you're available for her to initiate. The easier you make it on her in the beginning, the more likely that she is to do it. I'm talking about prolonged eye contact. Creating a nice romantic ambiance at home or on a date, maybe even just some good old fashioned flirting. Do you forget to flirt with your wife? Plenty of people do. I promise if you make her feel beautiful, cared for, attended to, sooner or later, she's going to want to jump those bones of yours. Which brings me to step six. Be ready to go slow. Remember, good things take time and changing the dynamic in any relationship is a process. She might start by just initiating a long makeout session. Doesn't that sound great? Maybe it should take a while to go from subtle cues to full on overt initiation. It's important just to remember that because y'all have identified this as a goal in your relationship, it doesn't mean that it's just gonna happen overnight. You've gotta give feedback, you've gotta support the little moves that you see, the, the little steps. And the more that you support those and give her positive feedback, hey babe, like thank you so much for initiating, I really see the progress that you're making there, I appreciate it. You're gonna be on your way to having super sex in no time. 
And hey, it's still okay to not be in the mood. It is okay like to not be on the same page from time to time. We're human, these things are gonna happen. There are gonna be times when you're just not turned on and that's okay. Work together to figure out how to best communicate about those differences in moods and desires. You wanna be able to talk about these in a way that doesn't hurt your relationship. Learning to express care and affection in non-sexual situations often leads to more sex anyways. And my final step, celebrate the progress. Hey, we all respond well to positive feedback. So when your partner initiates, be sure to tell them how hot it was, blow them up, gas them up. If your partner puts effort into their appearance, if they plan a nice date, they help you tidy up around the house, they make a nice dinner for the family, be sure to voice your appreciation and often. Celebrating each other makes you feel closer. It makes you feel more eager to please one another. Plus, it just makes the entire process infinitely more enjoyable. And remember, no matter what you are going through in your relationship, I'm always only a couple clicks away. If you'd like my help or the help of one of my certified sex and relationship coaches, apply for coaching. The link is in the description. We offer free hour long discovery calls to make sure that coaching is a good fit for you before you ever sign up. Fill out the application form in the description below and my team will be in touch. All right, these are my thoughts on initiating sex, but tell me, what are yours? I'm sure that y'all have some creative ideas and kinky, wild, sexy things that y'all have figured out, you bunch of sex nerds out there. I Love you. I'm Caitlin V. Leave those ideas in the comments and I will see you here next week. Mwah!